On today's shoe comparison, we are going to decide once and for all which of the following is the better daily trainer. Is it the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39 or is it the Hoka Mach 5? Let's compare and contrast and let's sort this out. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed watching this content, thanks so much. Love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Strava, for all sorts of updates in regards to training for the Tokyo Marathon, life events, and all sorts of stuff like that. So without further ado, let's begin. Specs for both shoes on each side respectively to the shoe. And we'll just compare and contrast some of the shoes stuff related to specs right away. So I obviously, as you can see from the specs, we'll just start with the Pegasus 39, the newer of the two models that basically what's going on here is that the shoe is following the same winning formula that the Pegasus has been using for a pretty huge chunk of years right now, at least since the 37, maybe even up to the 35 in terms of some of the technologies associated with the shoe. So obviously, as you can see from the write-outs, we do have a 33 millimeter heel and a 23 millimeter forefoot uh, which gives this shoe about a 10 millimeter offset in terms of stack height. Now, the stack height is de debated, however, into being 8 millimeters when the shoe is uh, cut in half and basically the heel actually drops a few uh, millimeters. But for the case of what Nike tells us the shoe is, we are running with the specs as listed above here. And of course, the shoe is using React foam all the way across and has not one, but two air zoom pods in the shoe. One here in this like midfoot area and then one in the heel. So if you're a heel striker, you're going to get some sort of air zoom pod, I guess, oomph from the shoe ultimately. But yes, that's just kind of contingent to your running style. Personally, I don't really heel strike, so I don't really feel that heel pod. But I am more of a forefoot, midfoot striker, so I will feel this pod in a few places as we'll get to in a minute here. In the upper, it's basically a nice textile mesh as we go across. It is kind of a heavier build on top, so during a summer run, it may get a little bit, uh, I guess, I'm gonna use the word moist, that's a really weird word to use, but you can definitely store a lot of the fluids and other sweat in your foot as you're running during the summer with as much material as there is and not nearly as much breathability as other running shoes you can get on the market. Now, of course, we have, uh, as we call it, I believe this is the fly uh, lace pattern here on top. Um, again, this is a really cool feature to this shoe in particular of just being able to have a bit of a stretch in the shoelaces and being able to adjust them accordingly to what feels right for you. And I guess the other thing to mention is that the tongue is gusseted on this shoe just a smidgen, not all that too much, like a, you know, not like a Vaporfly Next Percent where it's like really off to the side and thinned out. Here we got a little bit of cushion, a little bit of pillow, so there's some room for adjustment. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the lip of the heel and the heel guard itself, still a lot of cushion uh, to keep you from basically scratching and kind of hitting the sides of this foot in weird spots overall. So that's kind of going uh, for the specs in terms of the Pegasus 39. When we talk about the Hoka Mach 5, uh, you guys have probably definitely seen enough videos from the from me regarding this shoe because again I'm really catching up with it um, in terms of every 50 miles and how the shoe's life is pretty much going. So as we can talk about here, uh, the shoe is running 29 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot, giving it a five millimeter offset, which is sort of unusual if your shoes are usually going from this neutral zero millimeter offset, a four, an eight, and like a ten. A five is just in a weird spot. Mm -hmm. But it makes for the shoe to have a lot of nice midfoot work, basically, to go along with it. And in addition, it gives it a lot of good training abilities, in my opinion, to something like an Alpha Fly, or I believe the Carbon X and the Rocket X, which seem to have very similar specs in terms of, you know, the stack heights in that regard. I digress. The point here is that uh, in the general specs of the shoe, there's two types of foams that are just being used across. We do have this ProFly Plus, which is a lot softer. It has a much stronger rebound and then we have this EVA foam here on the bottom which is meant to have a little bit more protection not nearly be as bouncy as like the ProFly Plus but yeah it's basically just supposed to act more as the rubber and the protection for the ProFly as you get the bounce out of your shoe whether that works or not is kind of in the eye of the beholder but I'll tell you from personal experience I really enjoy the ride of this shoe and it's not the fastest shoe I've ever owned because you know carbon plate shoes exist and there's other factors like that to play in but as a daily trainer really quite fast with this combination of foams. 
And now in the upper, it's pretty thin, I would say, um, but I can see why it would resemble in a similar way to the Pegasus 39, a bit of thickness kind of going up here. And it, in my opinion, it's almost as if the thickness is kind of built out in a similar fashion where, yeah, the shoe will store a little bit of moisture in here if you're um, basically going on a run during the summer and not having a lot of breathability is going to kind of cause some issues in the Mach 5. And similar to the Peg 39, we do have this like lip in the heel and in the heel guard area. Uh, we do have some, you know, pillowing that is going to take some work to break in to basically have the comfortable ride that you're looking for. And then the shoelace area, it's not really woven in a kind of like how the Pegasus 39 was with the uh, laces on, underneath the shoe. This one is just woven right into the upper. And again, some little things kind of going on here as to why the shoelaces are so tightly knit right now. And we'll kind of talk about that right now as we begin comparing and stating basically the pros and cons of both shoes which i think we'll just do now so i think we'll start with the mach 5 in terms of all the pros and all the cons and then you know how they compare to the peg 39 so let's see um the pros i like of the shoe as i kind of already mentioned is that the foam combination definitely works and i'm glad that hoka has kept it However, a major con of the shoe is the lifespan in question. As you can see, I'm a little bit around 200 miles into the shoe and this foam is really getting beat up. Particularly, I guess, in my right foot, you can see that I'm starting to break into this profile a lot more and this is where the trouble essentially starts for the shoe's lifespan. But uh, I digress, like if the shoe had some rubber here, it may cause the shoe to weigh a little bit more, which would give it a disadvantage against like the Peg 39 because again, the con here is that the lifespan of the shoe is kind of something in trouble to question, but the weight of the shoe is a pro, and also the foam style choice and, you know, the rebound off the ground is also a pro, so those two in tandem make this a very light daily trainer that's extraordinarily fast, but puts it in a weird spot in terms of lifespan. Now, with the Pegasus 39, there's a couple of things that I've talked about in previous renditions of my Pegasus videos that we should probably get into. So number one, the biggest pet peeve, which is particularly in the left foot here, is this Air Zoom Pod, always in my left foot. And now, after a while, you gotta think, okay, shame on the shoe the first time, but the second time around, it's probably a shame on me kind of thing if the Air Zoom Pod is feeling a little bit better initially and then later on it starts getting worse so this could be again a issue with the ride of the shoe which is not to, it's not to be ruled out but i'm just telling you kind of my experiences with it and it's also very possible with this particular shoe that um you know it's just maybe my foot is not in the good muscular position to be able to ride in this thing maybe i have weak tendons in the left foot and the way i strike with the shoe is just not good overall so that being said it's even if i were to correct these things it would take time and like that's something as runners we typically don't have unless you're training for a marathon then all of a sudden all your time is gone but i digress the point is like when you want something to be effective and useful in the moment the peg 39 is just not quite there for me in terms of the strike with this left foot that's like one of the major cons is like the technology should be good and it's just not working out for me whatsoever and it's kind of uh you know it's a trouble piece to this shoe um one of the pros of course is that the shoe is built like a brick it's super comfortable like that in this sort of sense and the ride can be quite fun when you're striking the proper way and you know you're not worried about this air zoom pod being an issue but also the ride has its cons as well in the sense that the shoe does sometimes feel kind of stiff despite not having like a carbon plate, mm -hmm. right? But the shoe in comparison to the Mach 5 definitely feels a little bit stiff. So that's just kind of, you know, from a comparison standpoint. But that's not to say that the Peg 39 isn't a flexible shoe compared to other shoes that I've raced with like the or have run with like the Magic Speed or uh, I think one of the other ones I'm thinking of is probably like the New Balance 1080 version 11. Like some of those shoes are kind of stiff and this one is not quite as stiff as those. So that being said, um, the ride is like hit or miss depending on how the shoe goes. But it's the way I see it, like the Pegasus 39 is nothing extraordinary or at least not with the revisions of the shoe that I was hoping for that could make it better in the long run. So. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to end up with this conclusion. I guess you guys can probably already figure out where I'm going with this. If I had to continue choosing between the two daily trainers, like, 
I'm still going to rock the Hoka Mach 5 as the better of the two shoes, but the lifespan of the shoe makes things a little bit tricky overall. Now, from a price standpoint, I believe both shoes were roughly in the same price range, if not this one being at a discount. I may have bought this for $100, and this may have been like $140, $160 at the time. So the point here is that the shoe is definitely of better quality. It is a little bit more expensive. And when I mean quality, I mean quality of speed. But the quality of the shoe in terms of a running, from a running standpoint, is excellent in my opinion. But the lifespan is going to be a major question, uh, question. whether uh, here in the PEG 39, the lifespan should be quite good in this shoe as I've had the Pegasus 37 and I ran it 400 plus miles to the point where I ripped the air zoom pod out basically. And um, yeah, just the problem is just the mechanics of the shoe make things tricky to enjoy the ride of the shoe the way I would like to. And I know this is an issue not just for me, for a lot of other runners as well. So. Unfortunately, that's where I stand with the Pegasus 39. So, yeah, I'm ending the video here to tell you that I think the Mach 5 is still the better shoe overall, but if you guys agree or disagree with my assessment or have any other sort of comments or sort of personal experiences with the shoes you have, you know, definitely let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to hear what you guys think about them. So, yeah, on that note, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.